What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to a special episode talking about the latest firmware for the Canon EOS R5C. So Canon just recently released firmware version 1.0.4.1, and with it came a whole slew of new features, some updates for lenses, RFS lens support, tons of stuff. It's really worth the, the install just for the variety of quality of life and just general upgrades that came with it. Uh, but the one I want to talk about in this video specifically is power saving mode. Uh, specifically, anybody who knows or who owns or who's looked into the R5C is probably aware that it eats batteries for lunch. And power saving mode is a, an effort by Canon to help curtail that to a limited extent. Um, Canon advertises 30% longer recording times. Uh, I actually saw better than 30% longer recording times in the testing, so spoilers. Uh, but I kind of came about this from a, a completely different perspective, which maybe is not really fair to Canon. It's certainly not the perspective that I think most people would come at it about, but I was obviously interested in having seeing some savings in power, uh, but I was interested to see if this would have some other improvements in performance that weren't necessarily directed at power savings. So why am I beating around the bush at this and what am I actually getting at? Well, I've done a lot of testing on both the EOS R5 and the R5C. It's been the bulk of the videos that I've put out on this channel for the last uh, two years almost now. One of the things that really jumped out to me when Canon started talking about a 30% power improvement or saving power savings improvement is what we see on the EOS R5. So the EOS R5, when you're recording in 4K, has two modes that it can record in. You can record it in what Canon calls high quality or fine mode, where it reads out the 8K sensor and downsamples it to 4K. And this is just what the R5C does all the time. The other option is that you can read out the sensor line skipped. And I know people are going to be already pounding away at their keyboards. Line skipping sucks. Yes, it can, uh, but a lot of it depends on just what the implementation is or more specifically what the resolution of the sensor is. Now, of course, downsampling is better. Uh, it does improve noise performance. It doesn't have any potential visual artifacts the way that line skipping does. But here's the deal. On the R5, if you are shooting in standard quality 4K, which is line skipped, there's a 31% decrease in power consumption compared to downsampling, which is pretty much what Canon's advertising here. The quality isn't that bad because the native resolution of the sensor is such that you can line skip to 4K and you actually have 4K worth of resolution to work with. But the part that really made this interesting for me is that on the R5, when you shoot in standard quality mode, so with line skipping, not only do you save power, but it improves the camera's rolling shutter performance by about 40%. And this has been a big point that I have made in several videos in the past when I've done work on rolling shutter for both the R5 and the R5C, which is strictly speaking, the R5 gives you the opportunity to shoot either lower or higher quality downsampled video for slower action where that resolution or quality actually matters, as well as shooting line skipped video for faster action where the line skipping just isn't going to have as much of an impact due to the motion blur. So that's what I was hoping to see. Uh, I know Canon markets this as there, this was marketed as purely, uh, power savings, but I was hoping that they would implement it the same way that they did on the R5, because there's a similar power difference there, and we also get a performance benefit out of it to boot. So what did we get? Well, Canon advertises a 30% increase in recording time. I actually saw better than that in my actual battery testing, uh, but the whole situation ends up being pretty confusing when I go went through all of the testing. So we'll talk about that in a second. There are some limitations when you're shooting in power saving mode on the camera. So you can't shoot raw or 8K video. Well, if they're doing line skipping, that makes sense because 8K, you can't line skip to 8K from an 8K sensor. So, you know, that's not gonna be a factor or consideration. And raw on Canon cameras requires reading out all the pixels. So it has to be at the sensor's native resolution. It's not line skip. There's no line skipped raw. 
Additionally, slow and fast motion is unavailable when shooting at 4K with XFAVC intraframe compression. So this is the highest bit rates that are supported under XFAVC. This one hurts. The LCD and viewfinder luminance settings are locked to their lowest values. If you're not familiar with it on the R5C, the LCD luminance and viewfinder luminance for that matter, are basically your big backlight controls for adjusting screen brightness, specifically for the LCD. The viewfinder being, you know, that it's a, a shaded display, it's a little bit different. But specifically for the LCD, the luminance setting lets you increase the backlight brightness, and then you can fine tune the actual display brightness using the bright LCD brightness setting. So this one's really important. If you shoot outside a lot, obviously you need the brightest display you can get. Uh, you know, if you're not using an external monitor at least. So not having the ability to change this does kind of hurt. The next three really come down, I think, to added processing of video in the camera. So HDR assist is unavailable, the network functions are unavailable, and the USB video modes, so the webcam, uh, USB video camera, and the uh, USB smartphone connection modes are not available. I think ultimately this comes down to simply the fact that it to, to use any of those, the camera has to reprocess the video data into some other video data that's going to be put out on the, the either the network or to your smartphone or to over USB. And as a result, you know, it's more power being burned to do that. Uh, finally, the multifunction shoe will not have accessory power. Uh, this turns out to be about a half a watt that the accessory shoe can provide in terms of power, which doesn't sound like a whole lot until you realize that a 16 watt hour battery is uh, the biggest battery that the camera can take natively. So a half a watt is, an actual, is actually an appreciable amount of power given the system we're talking about. So spoilers, does it work? Yes. In practical testing with a battery, I saw an average of 46% longer recording times at 4K60. So whatever they're doing, it's doing something. Now, here's the question. How does this work? And what do we get out of this? And when, where, and how well does this work? Well, to answer the first one, how does this all work? As far as I can tell, it's black magic. I can't figure out what the heck Canon's actually doing. And if they're doing line skipping, they're doing it in a way that it matches the visual performance of the downsampled mode so you don't get a rolling shutter improvement or, uh, well, well, let's just talk about it. Let's get to the testing. So first of all, first thing that I tested, I was, primarily most interested in seeing how the rolling shutter performance was affected by this. Because as I said, on the R5, when you shoot standard quality, which it's not sold as a power saving mode, you see the same power benefits that the camera sees or the Canon saying the R5C gets, uh, but you also see a benefit in rolling shutter performance. So ran the test. Now I, this is a, it was a cursory test. I made a few gaffes in the setup uh, specifically. I didn't calibrate the brightness or the ISOs high enough for the test to be run properly. So if you were comparing this to my previous rolling shutter tests, this isn't comp comparable. Um, the way I do the rolling shutter tests, uh, but this would have been sufficient to notice a difference in performance. And what we're seeing is that there's no discernible difference in performance between having the camera in power saving mode or not in power saving mode. So uh, no gain in rolling shutter, which is a bit disappointing to me. So not seeing a change in the rolling shutter performance, the next thing I jumped over to is USB power delivery. Uh, the way the R5C takes power, and I believe this is also true for the R5, they just don't disable the battery door sensor. Uh, once the camera has negotiated and initialized the USB power, it no longer depends on the battery at all. You can literally flip the battery door open and drop the battery out of the camera while it's on USB power, while it's recording, and it will not miss a beat. So uh, power consumption measured based on the USB-C port has been a reliable indicator in the past to whether the camera was doing uh, more, using more or less power. Now, there was, is one limitation here. I didn't go out and buy a super sophisticated metrology grade or laboratory grade USB power meter thing. Uh, I'm using a Klein ET920 USB digital multimeter. It is not the most 
sophisticated tool. Uh, to compensate for its limitations, I ran these tests for more than four minutes, looked at what the test time was, looked at what the power consumption was for that test period, made, a, me made my measurements as soon as the power consumption updated, and then backed that out to an average instantaneous watts. So this is the, what I saw from the, the power testing over USB power delivery. So 4K60, regardless of XFAVC or HEVC, draws about 15 watts. No discernible difference between power saving mode on or off. 4K24 and 1080p24, 24, both are around 10 watts. There's more spread in the data here, but I would also point out that the error bars for this, I've calculated out to be around 5%. These are all kind of well within the error margin. Um, there's just not enough conclusive evidence uh, to say that this is a, an actual discernible difference. And ultimately, what we really are looking for here would be like a 30% difference, not a 5% difference, as that's what Canon is advertising the power save mode does. So obviously there's no appreciable difference in power consumption when powered over USB PD. So where's the power savings? Canon advertises a number. There are truth in advertising laws and you, know, they, you can say, well, they say up to, but they also say up to recording in 4K 60 XF AVC, which is one of the cases that I tested. Uh, and I'm I, so far not seeing any difference. Well. Is there a difference? Does the camera, I mean, what's going on? I mean, certainly there is a difference because I already spoiled that there is. Now, one thing I did notice in the process of doing this is all of the camera on-camera battery life estimates, they do change. Uh, for example, with my camera set to 1080p24 and HEVC compression, uh, an LPE6 NH battery at 100% charge, so just off the charger in the camera, with power saving mode off, I see an estimated runtime of 62 minutes, and with power saving on, I see an estimated runtime of 80 minutes. Now, that's a 30% increase in battery life. What Canon is advertising? Now, of course, my concern was is that Canon, you know, could theoretically fudge those numbers. And I mean, I can't imagine that would be an intelligent move from them uh, because that would not be the right, you know, even remotely the right way to do it. Uh, but there's been enough questions so far that I decided that the only thing that I had left, the one thing that I could do is a full on battery rundown test. So freshly charged battery in the camera, hit record, record a timer, and let it run until the camera powered off. I didn't want to do this with my good batteries because, well, this is not exactly the best thing to do for your battery life or battery health. It's kind of hard on the batteries to run them down as far as they'll go before the camera turns off. Uh, so, I did these with a pair of LPE6N batteries that I bought together in 2016. Now, yes, it was a pair of batteries. It wasn't the same battery used for all the tests. The batteries were bought together. They've been used as a pair in my 5D Mark IV. They have the exact same, with a battery grep, they have the exact same number of charge cycles. Can I guarantee that they have the exact same wear? No, but that shouldn't be far enough out to make a material difference in the test. Certainly not with what I saw. Now, I do want to point out, since these were LPE6Ns, they're only 14 watt hour batteries. If you're using the LPE6NHs, those are 16 watt hour batteries. They have 14% more capacity. Your run times should be at least 14% longer than what I actually saw here. So I did this test twice, actually, because I was so blown away by the numbers I got from the first test that I thought there, there had to have been something wrong. I, I had to screwed something up. So first test was 4K 60 XF AVC compression. The second test was 4K 60 HEVC compression. Why did I use a different compression? Just to get a slightly different data point. This is what I got. For XF AVC with power save off, I got 22 minutes and 51 seconds of recording time. For HEVC with power saving off, I got 22 minutes and 26 seconds of record time. Turn 
power save mode on and the XF AVC record time went out to 32 minutes and five seconds. So that's a 40% increase in recording time. And in HEVC mode, it went to 34 minutes and 13 seconds, which is a 52% increase in recording time. So on average, that was a 46% increase in record time. This also exactly reflects the kind of performance difference I see on the R5 between standard quality and high quality, which led some credibility to that might be what's going on here. And it beat the numbers, or at least matched the numbers that Canon was advertising at 30%. Now I say beat or matched because depending on which way you phrase it, 30% or 45%, it, it ends up being the, the same difference. So what the heck is going on here? What's the takeaway? Well. Power saving mode does seem to work in practice, at least with batteries. What I'm seeing in actual like record on a battery performance, it's a bigger difference than I would expect from just a rounding error or test errors. That said, the amount of difference that is shows up just on battery versus every other test that I did uh, really shook my confidence, honestly, in the numbers that I came up with. I went back, I looked at my test procedures, I went over things twice. It was the same kind of testing that I did for every other power test that I have done on the R5, the R5C, other cameras that are USB PD powered, etc. I, I don't have a good explanation for that. It does seem like possibly if Canon realizes that it's powered externally instead of off of the battery, that it is not in use or not using as much power saving performance or capability as it could. Um, it seems like a really weird way to implement this. Like you would, uh, to me, implement the power saving across the board. So you turn it on, it just resets the camera settings for uh, line skipping, d dispatch, etc., pixel dispatch. Uh, and it doesn't care what the power source is so that you would have a saving power savings, whether you were on battery or external battery or whatever, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it also doesn't seem to have any benefit in rolling shutter performance. That was the big thing I was hoping for. Uh, you know, not that everybody's going to use it or even I would use it all the time, but having the option I think is really beneficial. It's one of the reasons, again, that I keep saying that the, there's the, one of the benefits that I see in the R5 in some respects over the R5C is the ability to adjust the rolling shutter while still shooting full frame. So, yeah. That's the deal. Uh, that's my testing so far. If you have some experience with power saving, you're seeing completely different numbers, etc. Obviously, I can't re replicate every possible situation, and there's always the possibility that I messed something up or something like that. Uh, drop a comment below and let me know how your experience has been. Uh, I have not actually used power saving. Well, I don't oh, hardly ever shoot off the battery in the camera at all. Uh, I use external power 99% of the time. Uh, so. This is not something that I'm going to have any real field work or data on in the near future. Uh, but uh, I'd love to hear your experiences. Drop a comment below. I hope this was useful or at least interesting. If it was, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.